G'day once again. Just going to uh, give you a presentation to perhaps clear up a few of the misconceptions out there. Now, um, over the years, we have come to accept certain words to mean certain things. And uh, what I'm fast finding out is that um, what we've all been led to believe is totally the opposite. So black is white and white is black and up is down and down is up. So let's go through this and see what the popular misconception of wills and how they affect us. First one will go to Bovia's online because that's readily available to everyone and um, Will is criminal law, the power of the mind which directs the actions of the mind. But let's skip down to number four. Now I'll do this. I'll do this quite a bit because I think you can always pause the video and um, read through everything you want. I'll just point out the main things or the bits that I want to point out. Uh, so we'll go down to four. The defect or want of will may be classed as follows: as that of infancy. Dementia, ignorance, and, and the last one there, well-grounded fear. Okay, so um, the defect of want of will. Now, I think you'll find that that, that last bit there, uh, number four, affects all of us because we are still child. We're, uh, this is what we're classed as. Uh, will or testament. The legal declaration of a man's intention of what he wills to be performed after his death. The terms will and testament are synonymous and they are used in, indifferently by common lawyers. Okay, so they're synonymous. Testament, civil law, the appointment of an executor or testamentary heir according to the formalities subscribed, prescribed by law. Okay. So there are slight differences, but you'll find there's a lot more as we move into it. Now, this is from uh, Butterworth's New Zealand Law Dictionary. Will, the expression of a living person's wishes concerning the disposition of property. Now, this is the main clue here. It is about the disposition of property to take effect after that person's death. Such expressions being made in the manner prescribed by law. Well, we'll We'll look at what that says. It says a will must be in writing, signed by the will maker or by another at the will maker's direction, in the will maker's presence, in the presence of two witnesses. Okay, so we've got to have a minimum of two witness, two witnesses when you are making your will. Now that is one of the keys to this. So whenever you do your will, two witnesses. Will maker, a person who expresses his or her wishes concerning the disposition of property after his or her death. And the Wills Act 2007 provides that the will maker means a person who makes changes, revokes or revives a will and is the equivalent of a testator and testatrix. Right, we're bringing some more new words in there now. Tester, will maker, testator and testatrix. But the key that I wanted you to see there was revives a will because this will become quite apparent. Revive, return to life, recover life or strength. And I think that's what we really need to do to, to get this. But it also says to make and execute a, a codicil to the revoked will according to proper formalities to revive the terms of the re revoked will. Now, another word has slipped in here, codicil, which will become very, uh, very important. Interpretation. This is from the Wills Act, 1837. The words and expressions hereafter mentioned with their ordinary signification have a more confined or a different meaning shall in this act, except where the nature of the provisions or, or the context of the act shall exclude such construction be interpreted as follows. That is to say, the word will shall extend to a testament. We've already seen that. Now we're saying a will is a codicil and to an appointment by will. Now those two are very, very important. A codicil and an appointment. But when we move further down here, the words personal estate 
shall extend to leasehold estates and other chattels real, and also to monies, shares of government and other funds. Now, all those people who say that um, that uh, there is no estate there with any money for us need to read this act very carefully. It says here, the words personal estate shall extend to leasehold estates and other chattels real, and also to monies, shares of government, and other funds. Read the whole thing. That is a very, very important one, um, interpretation to read. And so any of the doubters out there that say that there is no estate need to read that. Now we'll move on to the Administration Act 1969. Now, the 13, Executor of Executor represents original testator. I'll go into that a little bit later, but it's it's um, more apparent down here at number three. The chain of representation is broken by the failure to leave a will or the failure of a tester to, to appoint an executor or the failure to obtain probate of a will. Now, a lot of people have made a lot of mistakes um, trying to appoint executors and so on, but now Hopefully this will help uh, help those of you who have done or gone down that path. Um, this will help you to get the final pieces to the jigsaw puzzle. So staying with the Administration Act, Section 2, in this Act, unless the context other otherwise requires, administration means probate of the will of a deceased person and includes letters of administration. We'll come to includes a little bit later. Letters of administration. Okay, will includes a codicil. So now we'll see what includes means. Uh, we're going to have fun with the uh, Latin of this. Inclusio unius est exclusio ulterius. If it's wrong, please uh, slap me. The inclusion of one is the exclusion of another. When any legislation says will includes a codicil, what it is saying is only, will is only a codicil. So let's look what a codicil is. And once again, we'll go to Butterworth's New Zealand Law Dictionary. Codicil, a testamentary, now we've seen testamentary uh, previously, instrument executed in the same manner as a will is required to be executed and made as an addition or a supplement to a will made earlier. Okay, now we saw how we had to do a will. We had to have, it had to be in writing. And when they say in writing, you may want to look at that word. Um, writing doesn't mean typewritten or off a printer or something like that, in my humble opinion. But anyway, we'll move along. Testator, tester tricks. We came, ag uh, came across testator, a person who makes a will. See the Administration Act 1969, Section 13, Executor of Executor represents original testator. Right, now let's have a look. The executor of our executor represents the original testator. So the original testator was our parents. It was their will to register us for the benefits that we would receive. So the the original will is by your parents and the executor that is there at the present represents your parents, not us. Okay, so if you get that clear, we should be able to get through this little conundrum that we have. Okay, the original testator represents the, sorry, the original executor represents our parents. They were the original testator. It was their will to register us. So who do we appoint as, as uh, executor? Well, we'll go to the Limitation Act and we will see. 53, Section 53 of the Limitation Act, personal representatives making or defending claim on behalf of a deceased estate. Personal representative in this section and for an, 
an individual who has died, the deceased means a person who is the executor, okay, administrator or trustee and is, and is making or defending a claim on behalf of the deceased's estate. Now, when we look at person, we will see that the person is not us. Now, we're going to come back to this particular thing a little bit later in the presentation, but it's very important to see that the person is not a living person. All right. The expression of the public body, local authority, board, society, or company, it's not a living person, a, a, a lot, not a living man or woman. Okay, now here's another couple of terms that we need to consider um, when doing what we're going to be doing. Okay, so Butterworth's New Zealand Law Dictionary, principal, highest in rank, authority, character, importance, or degree. Okay, principal is the highest rank. Uh, now, I've heard all sorts of different theories about who is the highest rank and capitus diminutio and all these things. It tells you very clearly here, principal is the highest rank. We'll move further along to power of attorney. An authority given by one person to another to act for him or her, for example, to transfer land, receive debts, and sue. Okay, now, if you're going to ever act on behalf of someone, you need a power of attorney, and you do that with lowercase pp. And, and once again, here's a nice little Latin maxim here, per procreation, okay? But PP, if you put PP in front of your signature, then you are the principal and you're coming in as power of attorney for someone else. Okay, now let's, I'm going to throw a real curveball at you now and um, show you what privacy means. Once again, this comes from Butterworth's. The interest of a person in sheltering his or her life from unwanted interference of public scrutiny. And this is done with the Privacy Act 90, 1993, and it establishes the principles with respect to um, collection, use, disclosure by public and private sector agencies. Now, this, this is going to become a very, very important act, as you shall see. The Privacy Office and Office Holder appointed in terms of the Privacy Act, Section 12. Section 13 sets out the functions of the Privacy Commissioner. These include monitoring compliance by agents within the provisions of the Act relating to information matching and receiving and inviting representations from members of the public on any matter affecting the privacy of the individual you will see that this is a very, very important act. Principle 7 of the Privacy Act says, Correction of Personal Information. Where an agency holds personal information, the, ind the individual concerned shall be entitled to request the correction of the information and to request there be attached to the information a statement of the correction sought but not made. Okay, so... They're telling us here in the Privacy Act, if and, and we saw earlier that um, the privacy was the um, keeping all our business in the private thing. Now, once, once I started looking for individual, I had a great deal of difficulty. I couldn't find it in Butterworth. I couldn't find it in Bovis. But I did find it in a couple of places. And this is um, uh, from Etymology Online. Uh, single object or thing, meaning a single human being, uh, one and indivis indivisible, inseparable. Okay, so individual has sprung up quite a few times, so it's quite important. But um, this comes from Black's Law Dictionary and was the only place I could find it. Individual, as a noun, this term denotes a single person as distinguished from a group or class and also very, very commonly, a private or natural person. Okay, now that seems to be the title we want, 
a private or natural person as distinguished from a partnership, corporation or association. As an adjective, individual means pertaining or belonging to or characteristic of one single person, either in opposition to a firm, association or corporation or considered in his relationship to there too. Now, all the different um, uh, things we've tried and heard over the years uh, was that we wanted to be man, we wanted to be this, we wanted to be that. Individual seems to be the more correct. Um, once again, open to uh, scrutiny, but do your own study. Now, principle seven was about correction of the record. So, um, if we're going to correct the record, we're going to have documents concerning our birth. So, um, and I'll tell you, there's a plethora of them. Um, these, these are some of the ones that I've found out. The birth certificate, which is uh, in New Zealand here, is called the BD, BDM 107. Uh, we've got the printout. We've got a certificate of date of birth, which is the RG3B. We've got information on the 3B, which is the RG3G. We've got the source document, RG27. We've got RG1, RG9, RG32, and RG13. And RG174 is the notification sent to child welfare. So there's quite a plethora of them. But in my estimation, the first three are the documents that you're going to need. Now, if you look, you've got one is a birth certificate. And number three is a certificate of date of birth. Number three would be the one that would be surrendered but you would need to present these documents to show that there is some sort of um, uh, something wrong on the record if we're going to correct the information so the information that is on the RG, RG3B or overseas I believe it's called the short form birth certificate this is the information that will correct the record and you will need to surrender that. And there's probably a few more, including land. Uh, we're registered as land. We're registered in the patent office and design. You know, I mean, the the list goes on. Uh, as the matrix says, you have got no idea how far the rabbit hole goes. Now, I want you to read this... Uh, Stop Stop the um, presentation and read this carefully because, once again, this is showing you exactly where the trust revenue is. And this is Blackstone, and this is a very old book. I proceed, I proceed therefore, to the 18th and last branch of the King's Ordinary Revenue, which consists in the custody of idiots, from whence we shall be naturally led to consider also the custody of lunatics. Okay, so we're, we're idiots, we're lunatics, we're children. Okay, but this is the crux of it here. An idiot or natural fool is what one that has no understanding from his nativity. Okay, so the nativity is the birth. Now, I've just shown you in the previous slide the documents that prove your nativity or your birthing. Okay, now if you read this carefully, you will see he is telling us in this one uh, book here, there's a lot more to it, but uh, this is the most important part. If you read that, you will see that the trust does exist and that once we understand our nativity, we can be set free. Okay, Butterworth New Zealand Law Dictionary Administration. The performance of the executive function of the government as opposed to the judicial. But that's not the, the most important part we're looking for. The, number four, the management of a deceased estate by a person duly authorised to act as executor or administrator, depending on whether the appointment was made by will or by the High Court. Okay, now... What you will find 
is if you go into the Trust DX, you will find that the Guardian Trust and, and all those other trust companies, the huge old companies that have been around for years and years and years, they are the ones who make an election to administer our estates on our behalf. Okay, so it tells you here whether the appointment was made by will or by the High Court. Okay, and so if it's made by the High Court, you will see that the Public Trust or one of these other companies have made an election to administer the deceased estate and they are now looking after it on our behalf. Okay, we need to find out why. what is the purpose of correcting the record. And you will once again find this in the Privacy Act. Principle 12, unique identifiers. Now, if you, if you go back to some of my older videos, like the Born Identity, we do not have an identity, and that's what we want. We don't want a name. We want an identity. If you can fix this clearly in your mind, that's the identity we're after. And once we correct the record, then we should be issued with this unique identifier. Um, and it tells us um, in number three here, an agency that assigns unique identifiers to individuals shall take all reasonable steps to ensure that unique identifiers, uh, identifiers are assigned only to individuals whose identity is clearly established. So if you've got those documents and you can show uh, who you are, then the Privacy Commissioner will issue you with an identity number. And that number is the one that links directly to your trust. Privacy regulations, service of notice of documents. Now, okay, regulations are where all the forms and all the instructions are when you are going to apply for something from the government. So the service of notices and documents, subject to regulation one, so, subject to Regulation 8, any notice or other document required or authorised to be served on or given to any person for the purpose of may be served or given by delivering it to that person. Two, any such notice may be delivered to the person personally or by leaving it at that person's usual. Okay, this is what it's telling you what to do, but there's a little twist because the next part of it, number six of the same um of the same uh, regulation is service on absentee or deceased. Okay, now this is the key to it. For the purpose of regulation three, with a person on, on or to whom a notice of other document is required or authorized to be served or given, is absent from New Zealand or is deceased, the notice or document may be delivered as specified in that regulation a, where the person is absent from New Zealand to that person's agent in New Zealand, or B, where the person is deceased to that person's personal representative. Okay, now, the Limitation Act, Section 53, we went through this before. Personal representative making or defending claim on behalf of deceased estate, personal representative in this section, and for an individual who has died, the deceased, means a person who is the executor. Get that clear. Oh, sorry. Person. Person is the executor. Now, in the past, I know a lot of people who've gone and appointed themselves executor, but they can't. It has to be a person. So what you have to do is appoint your all capitals last name as executor. Once you appoint him with the right instructions, then they can probate the will or the codicil because the codicil brings it back to life and you nominate the person. The person is the all capital surname. In order to correct the record, you're going to have all documents related to your birth. This is just the summing up here now all documents related to your birth, you're also going to need a codicil appointing an executor, which is what I just went through, and that will be the person. You'll need a, a letter to the Privacy Commissioner outlining 
what you want him to do for you. Uh, and there's quite a, quite a bit that you will need to put in that letter to uh, uh, to get him to do. Most of it will be in the codicil, but you will need to notify the privacy commissioner as well. And you're going to need lots of study. Hopefully this has helped clear up quite a few things concerning wills and executors and maybe the final link that you were looking for. Good luck out there.